welcome back to our continued series on the glories of Sri Vrindavan Dham, as well as many of the Acharyas um, who have had their pastimes there. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pashtita Deshatarine All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, after <coughs> lecturing on a number of our acharyas um, connected to Vrindavan for the past few weeks, I was uh, going to uh, move on and describe some of the, well, some more of the holy places in Vrindavan. But then I suddenly remembered one very powerful acharya, a great devotee who I didn't speak on. And I cursed myself thinking that how in the world could I have forgotten to mention him, not only mention him, but lecture about him and the valuable contributions he made in, uh, in glorifying Vrindavan and Mayapur <coughs> and furthering the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And who is that great Acharya, that great personality? The illustrious Prabodhananda Saraswati. How many times have we quoted him in the last 11 months? And how many times have we heard Sridhar Prabhupada quote him in his books and in his lectures? So many times Prabhupada quotes that great devotee. <coughs> so today I'll have the honor um, to speak about him. A blessed day. <laughs> of course, speaking about um, Sridhar Prabodhananda Saraswati uh, poses as much a challenge as it did speaking about Gopal Bhatta Goswami in the sense that there's not a lot of information about either of them. <coughs> as great as these devotees are, they don't want their greatness to be advertised. Gopal Bhatta Goswami only agreed to give his blessings, as we mentioned some weeks ago, to um, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami to write uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita if um, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami didn't mention his name in the book. <coughs> And that's confirmed in the uh, Bhakti Ratnakara, first chapter, uh, text 222. Um, we hear, Shri Gopala Bhatta Hrishta Haya Ajna Dila Grante Nija Prashanga Varnite Nishe Dila. Quote, Shri Gopal Bhatta was also pleased to give Krishnadas Kaviraj uh, Goswami blessings to write the book but forbade Krishna Das to write about him. Who can understand why he forbade him? He always considered himself to be very lowly." Unquote. There's some confirmation there. <coughs> and so it is with um, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati. Um, we find no date of his birth or departure from this world in any of our uh, Shastras or historical records. All the information about his youth, about whatever, wherever he traveled, or even his time spent in Vrindavan, where he spent most of his life, could probably fill just, uh, you know, an A4 page of white paper. <coughs> Fortunately, however, he left us a, a veritable treasure, treasure chest of his writings which had become very, very dear to all Gaudiya Vaishnavas, including, you know, the, the members of our International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Devotees loved to read his writings, um, particularly Vrindavan Mahimamrita. Um, he also wrote Radharasa Sudhanidhi. It's a very deep book, but sometimes we quote from, from uh, passages from that book. Sangeeta Madhava. Uh, Chaitanya Chandamrita, that's one of my favorites. I'm often using um, verses from there to glorify Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Sankirtan movement. He also wrote uh, Navadvip Sataka <coughs> and other books. And I found a quote where Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur re refers to the writings of Srila Prabhupada Saraswati. And I, I will quote. Uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He writes, quote, The moods and sentiments, Baba Samuha, of Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati 
are quite distinct. <coughs> His language is simultaneously filled with sobriety and sweetness. All the devotees who have accepted shelter at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu get pleasure beyond measure by regularly reciting Srila Prabodhana Saraswati's Vrindavan Mahim Amrita, as we do. <coughs> <coughs> One important thing um, we do know about Srila Prabodhana Saraswati is who he is in the spiritual world, in Goloka Vrindavan. For that we can always, for these, these type of things we can always refer to Sri Gorong Gunadesha Dipika, <coughs> where, um, which was written by Kavikarnapura. And in reference to Prabodhananda Saraswati, it's in text 163. <coughs> Quote, Tunga Vidya Braja Yasit Sarva Shastra Vi Sharada Sri Prabodhananda Yatir Gorod Gana Saraswati. Quote, she who was previously known in the pastimes of Krishna in Braja as Tunga Vidya, who is fully conversant with all scriptures, has now become Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati and is engaged in singing the glories of Lord Gauranga. Unquote. And in the Gora Govinda Archana uh, Smarana Padati, it is stated, uh, Tunga Vidya is um, 14 years, 2 months, and 22 days old. It also mentions that um, <coughs> Srimati Radharani is 14 years, 2 months, and 15 days old. This would mean that um, Tunga Vidya is 7 days older than Srimati Radharani. <coughs> but according to the, um, I did a little research, according to the um, Radha Krishna Gunadisha Dipika, Tunga Vidya is 15 days older than Sri Radha. <laughs> and anyway, it's written that um, Tunga Vidya's complexion is the color of uh, kunkuma, and the fragrance of her body is like sandalwood mixed with camphor. Her dress is Pandu Mandana. Pandu Mandana means uh, pale yellow. And uh, she's uh, hot tempered by nature, and she's expert at resolving arguments. Her parents are uh, Pushkara and Madhadevi, and her husband is Balisha. Balisha. And actually, she's one of the um, leaders of the gopis, of course, because she's one of the Astasakis. And she's very learned in uh, 18 branches of knowledge. And she's very expert at arranging meetings for the divine couple, Radha and Krishna. And I was reading, she's very learned in uh, Rasa Shastra, or uh, the Shastras of Transcendental Mellows. <coughs> she's also very learned in Niti Shastra. Uh, that translates as uh, morality or sometimes logic. As well as um, uh, she's very expert in dancing, drama, uh, literature, and all of their arts and sciences. And she's a celebrated music teacher. She's expert at playing the veena. And she sings in the style known as marga, M-A-R-G-A, marga. That's her expertise. <coughs> Furthermore, um, her eight gopi messengers, uh, headed by Manju Mehta Devi, are especially expert um, at arranging political alli uh, alliances. That's called Sandhi, S-A-N-D-H-I, Sandhi. Uh, Sandhi is the, the first of um, diplomatic maneuvers in the art of politics between Radha and Krishna. <laughs> <coughs> and um, these gopis of Tunga Vidya um, are, are known as the the best dancers amongst all the Manjaris. And they themselves are musicians, very expert at playing the Murdanga and um, singing. It's described in recital halls. I thought that was interesting. They sing in recital halls. And these, um, her, her assistants, they take great pleasure in fetching water from the streams of Vrindavan. It sounds very simple, but remember, it's all imbued with great devotion for Radha and Krishna is very special. Now the um, 
Gora Govinda Archana Smarana uh, Pariti goes on to describe that um, on the western petal of Madana Sukanda Kunj, Madana Sukanda Kunj, lies the extremely beautiful crimson colored, crimson colored Tunga Vidya Nandara Kunj. Tunga Vidya Nandara Kunj, where um, Tunga Vidya resides. <coughs> this is all very, <coughs> you could say confidential knowledge, but um, our acharyas have revealed it to us so that we can become purified and one day desire to enter into these pastimes in Goloka Vrindavan. So Shastra says that um, Tunga Vidya loves Krishna very much and is, quote, filled with eagerness for that prem. And it's also described that she possesses a specific bhav or love known as uh, viplab dhatva. Viplab dhatva. I researched that and this, this is the mood of a gopi who is um <coughs> very distressed at heart because her lover Krishna has not arrived for the secret meeting. <laughs> and the behavior of such a gopi is marked by um, despondency, anxiety, lamentation, weeping, fainting, and sighing, of course, all on a transcendental level. <coughs> and um, an example is given in the scriptures. <coughs> that um, once a, uh, a certain gopi said to her friend, quote, O fun-eyed Saki, as surely as the moon has risen, have we not been deceived by the Lord of Lakshmi? In this situation, what shall I do? You please give me some advice. Saying this, she became depressed. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> There's a very beautiful verse also in the uh, Gorgovinda Archana Shmarna Pariti. I think it's verse uh, 283, describing um, Tunga Vidya, who descended into this world as Prabodhananda Saraswati. Quote, I worship the very Rasik tung Tunga Vidya, who is adorned with sandalwood paste mixed with camphor. Her beautiful saffron colored body is decorated with many fine jeweled ornaments. She delights in wearing a lovely red dress and she has many wonderful qualities. She knows many transcendental songs and she dances before Sri Hari to the beat of a dumpha drum, dumpha drum. D-U-M-P-H-A, Dumphadram. <coughs> Tunga Vidya's um, specific birthplace is called Dabha Raro, Dabha Raro. And the Charyas write that because it's um, her friend's home as a child, Sri Radha often goes there to play with her dolls because that's where Tunga Vidya lives. When Radha's a little girl, she goes to that place to play with her dolls. And there's a very nice um, pastime describing how Dabha Raro got its name. <coughs> the place, or you could say the village where she was, uh, where, where she was born. So that is as follows. One day while Krishna was herding his father's cows in the area of Varshana, Subal told him that Shimati Radharani was playing nearby with, um, with her friends in a, in a beautiful village, a beautiful place. So Krishna said, okay, let's, let's go see her. So Krishna followed Subal to a, um, a cluster of trees outside that area, that, that village, from where he could see um, all the gopis playing ball. And a very beautiful description is given of, of, of those gopis that, quote, their dresses billowing in the wind and their laughter warming the sunshine. They enjoyed their playful activity. Their dresses billowing in the wind and their laughter warming the sunshine. They engaged in their playful activities. Laughter warming the sunshine, wow. <laughs> so the girls, it's described, they look like <coughs> carefree goddesses of fortune. But one of them, it's mentioned, Shimati Radharani, stood out like a sparkling diamond set amongst valuable jewels. 
a sparkling diamond set amongst valuable jewels. And when Krishna saw um, Radha's, quote, elegant movements and her honeyed laughter, his eyes flooded, dubu, flooded dubu with tears. <laughs> so from that day on, the locals called the village Dabha Rauru, or the place where the Lord's tears flowed from his eyes. Let's go there. <laughs> we have to go there our next, on our next Kartik uh, Parikama. And that is where um, Tunga Vidya um, appeared. Dabha Rauru. <coughs> So it is that Tunga Vidya who appeared in the material world 500 years ago as the illustrious Srila Babodhananda Saraswati. So again, there's um, no information available, at least I couldn't find it after many, many hours of research. Actually, it took me two days. As to um, when and where um, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati took his birth, Essentially, <coughs> we are first introduced to him during Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's famous tour of South India after taking sannyas. <coughs> Mahaprabhu um, started on that tour from Jagannath Puri to South India in the year uh, 1511. And uh, as we know from reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, he first came to the Godavari River where he met uh, Sri Ramananda Rai, and they had those very beautiful um, exchanges, discussions. And after visiting many other holy places, uh, Mahaprabhu eventually arrived in, uh, in Madras, now, nowadays Chennai. And from there, he went to Sri Rangik Shetra. Rangik Shetra. That's where the Ranganatha deity is. I've been there on many times actually. It's one of my favorite places in India. It's like really like old India. So one, wonderful, beautiful temples and many Paka Brahmins and um, devotees of Krishna. And he he arrived there, uh, as we know from Chaitanya Charitamrita, just as the four months of the rainy season, Chaturmasya, were beginning. So he decided to stay in Sri Rangam during that four-month period, as was and is typical of traveling sadhus, because it's raining. Like in India, it rains really hard during the monsoon season. So it's difficult to travel, it's difficult to have, you know, pandal programs, outdoor programs, etc. So sadhus, during that four-month period, they, they pick a holy place and they sit and they read and they chant and they pray and associate with each other. But unknown to others, <coughs> um, Mahaprabhu had a secret desire, and that was to um, to meet with, to deliver, and to empower the family members of one Venkata Bhatta. Venkata Bhatta. He was a a, a prominent priest in the uh, Sri Rangam temple, and um, by Mahaprabhu's desire, he he met with um, Venkata Bhatta. I think it was in the temple they met. And Venkata Bhatta was very impressed with this uh, sannyasi, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> and he invited him to stay for those four months in his home, in his house. And that's an invitation that Mahaprabhu graciously accepted. <clears throat> now, Venkata Bhatta had two brothers. He was the middle brother, actually. Uh, the, his older brother was Tiru Malaya, and his younger brother was um, Gopal Guru. And Gopal Guru later became our Prabodhananda Saraswati when he took to the renounced order of life. And Venkat Bhatta also had a young son. And his son's name was Gopal, who would later take initiation from his uncle, Prabodhananda Saraswati, and become Gopal Bhatta Goswami. That um, Prabodhananda Saraswati is the actual guru of Gopal Bhatta Goswami is um, stated in the beginning of Hari Bhakti Vilas. Uh, first chapter, second verse actually. Quote, Gopal Bhatta, a disciple of Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati, 
a dear associate of Lord Chaitanya, is compiling the Hari Bhakti Vilas to please Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatana Goswami, and Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. So therein it's mentioned, Gopabhat, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada Saraswati. <coughs> and Jiva Goswami also confirms the same fact in his um, Vaishnava Vandana, Vaishnava Vandana, verse number seven. He writes, quote, I offer my humble obeisances unto the spotless Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati, who joyfully compiled the Chitanya Chandamrita and whose disciple is Srila Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So there it's confirmed. <laughs> so now initially when um, Lord Chaitanya arrived at the home of Venkata Bhatta, all the members of Venkata Bhatta's household were Sri Vaishnavas, meaning they're, they were followers of Sri Ramanujacharya. <coughs> now, the Sri Vaishnavas worship Lakshmi Narayan. Uh, in Vaik their, their mood is in the, uh, their, their worship is in the mood of Aishvarya Bhava, or, or awe and reverence, uh, the mood of Vaikuntha. But during his stay with the, with the Bhatta family, Lord Chaitanya famously converted them all into Gaudiya Vaishnavas, worshippers of Radha and Krishna and the Buddha's spontaneous love, like the gopis of Braj. And it's very interesting how it happened. Of course, it probably happened gradually, but there's a conversation related in Chaitanya Charitamrita and elsewhere where Mahaprabhu gave very convincing arguments how the worship of Radha and Krishna is higher than the worship of um, Lakshmi, Lakshmi Narayan because of its spontaneous, intimate, loving nature. So one day, um, Lord Chaitanya inquired from Venkat Bhatta. He said, My dear Venkat Bhatta, your worshipable goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, always remains on the chest of Narayan, and she's the most chaste woman in the creation. One time, however, she gave up all that transcendental happiness in Vaikuntha to perform austerities in Vrindavan to join Krishna in the rasa dance." Unquote. <laughs> so you could say in a, in a joking way Mahaprabhu was suggesting that um, Lakshmi Devi was not chaste because she left Lord Narayan for Lord Krishna. So Venkat Bhatta, he's a learned uh, priest, scholar, so he smiled and he said, my dear Lord Chaitanya, quote, you know Krishna and Narayan are the same person. They are just wearing different dresses. <laughs> Therefore, Lakshmi Devi is not breaking her vow of chastity. And it's true. <laughs> Krishna and Narayan are the same personality. Of course, Krishna is the original personality of God and Lord Narayan is its expansion, but they're identical, the same person, dif different moods. So then Mahaprabhu said, <coughs> true, but my dear Venkatabhata, why is it that Lakshmi was not actually successful in joining Krishna's rasa dance? So Venkatabhata, he said, quote, <clears throat> I cannot enter into the mystery of this incident. I'm just an ordinary living being. So Lord Chaitanya said, quote, the answer is that simply by performing austerities, that does not qualify one to join the rasa dance. Rather, only by following the gopi's mood of worshiping Krishna and spontaneous love can one eventually join the rasa dance. One has to follow in the footsteps of a Brajabhasi. And then Mahaprabhu continued, he said, My dear Venkata Bhatta, seeing um, Lakshmi Devi performing austerities, Lord Krishna said to her, quote, My dear Lakshmi Devi, you are faultless and I am deeply touched by your determination. But your reverential mood in serving and always serving me as your husband, which you cannot give up, is incompatible here in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, my devotees are unaware of me being the Supreme Lord. My mother accepts me as her son and ties me to a grinding mortar. Subal, my coward friend, sees me as his intimate friend and in our games, he playfully climbs on my shoulders and says, hey, what kind of big man are you? Do you want to fight? My dear Lakshmi Devi, how can you enter the rasa dance while maintaining the body 
and identity of the goddess of fortune and showing me the respect due to Lord Narayan, as you always do, will the gopis th think of me as their lover? It's not compatible. Can you imagine yourself as Lakshmi walking around these pasturing grounds collecting cow dung off the ground <laughs> and making patties and cooking simple preparations over a fire like the Braja Gopis do? Your service and the love that we share is all part of the loving exchanges that I enjoy throughout Vaikuntha. Therefore, as much as I am indebted to you for these austerities and penances that you are performing here in Braj, I cannot fulfill your request or desire, and neither do I want to. I am very happy with your service in Vaikuntha. So hearing this sublime explanation in philosophy <laughs> from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <laughs> quoting Lord Krishna, Venkatabhata and his family members were convinced, and they became Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And even today, that family, the descendants of that family, Marari Bhatta, uh, he's one of my very dear friends in, in Sri Rangam, Marari Bhatta Prabhu. He's a descendant of Venkat Bhatta. And uh, very often when I go to South India and I go to um, Sri Rangam, I stay with the family in their house. And for many years, it was the same house that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited, a stone house. Um, recently, it had to be... Um, well, I, I wouldn't say destroyed, but it had to be disassembled because they were making a big road there or something. But the parts of the house are, are preserved. But um, I stayed there on a number of occasions. And in that house, there was actually an indentation on the floor where um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would take rest every night. His form was there on the floor. And when I would go there, they would very kindly... Marari Bhatta Prabhu would provide a nice bed and, you know, all facilities, nice prasadam and wonderful association. He'd take us to the temple and we'd have special darshan, a Ranganath deity, etc. But um, I never slept in the bed. When everybody left the room, I slept on top of that uh, impression of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he made when he was sleeping on that stone. That's how I would sleep. So special mercy there. But today, they um, Rai Bhatta, they're priest in the temple, but he very much identifies with um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, of course, because his ancestor, Venkata Bhatta, did. And um, his ancestor, the uh, the brother of Venkata Bhatta, uh, uh, Gopal Guru, became Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati. And Venkat Bhatta's son became Gopal Bhatta Goswami. <laughs> so he identifies very closely with us. So he's a very nice Vaishnava, very, very favorable to Iskon, and, and um, very much appreciates what Sridhar Prabhupada has done in spreading um, the glories of Lord Krishna around the world. So after the four uh, months of the rainy season were over, Lord Chaitanya left to continue his travels. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur has written how the three brothers, uh, Tirumalaya, Venkata, and our Prabodhananda Saraswati, felt at the time that Mahaprabhu was leaving. You can imagine. They lived with him. They served him. They took his remnants of prasadam. <laughs> they heard him speak Krishna Kata such intimate association, living with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for, for four months. So Srila Bhakti Shananta Saraswati Thakur has written, I found the passage, how those three brothers felt when Mahaprabhu was walking away from their home. And I quote Srila Bhakti Shananta Saraswati Thakur with great pleasure. Quote, the, these three personalities are thinking, oh, how will we remain in the absence of Mahaprabhu? People will, will try to take us with them to bathe in the Kaveri River, to sport and enjoy some fun. But we will only be able to weep and cry in separation from Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's how they thought, and that comes from the mouth of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. I'll read it again. Oh, how will we remain in the absence of Mahaprabhu? 
People will try to take us with them to bathe in the Kaveri River, to sport and enjoy some fun, but we will only be able to weep and cry in separation from Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur continues by saying, quote, Srila <coughs> Prabodhananda Saraswati then entered deeply into the worship of Sri Krishna Chaitanya, his inner being totally possessed by Mahaprabhu's glories. Within a few years, he left Sri Rangam, setting out with a solemn vow to attain the most cherished object of his meditation. Without wasting time, he came to Mathur Mandala, and he took up residence in Kamyavan. Later, Gopal Bhatta Goswami followed in the footsteps of his uncle, arriving in Vrindavan. So some uh, very nice details given to us by um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur of how um, Prabhupada Saraswati left home and, and came to straight to Vrindavan and, and he came to Kamyavan, that special forest of Kamyavan. So there's, there's nothing much written of um, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati's many years in Vrindavan after arriving in Kamyavan. Um, like many uh, sadhus and renunciates, he often moved to holy places in Braj to write those many books that he left us. And one of his favorite bhajan kutirs was on the bank of the Jamuna River at Kaliagat. We, when we go on uh, Kartik Purkama, we always pass by Kaliagat. I mean, it's just a few meters off the Purkama mark, which was originally the Jamuna River flowed there. So you see the ghats there because the river was originally flowing. Now the river is flowing some distance away, the Jamuna. But there's still the same tree that Krishna jumped off to, to chastise the Kaliya serpent, that's still there. So that was one place that um, we know that uh, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati used to, to go and do, and do his bhajan. And eventually, <coughs> when he departed this world, he was placed in samadhi uh, just behind Kaliyagaj. It remains to this day a very quiet, a very clean, a very charming, secluded place, like a little forested area. Um, it, it's one of my favorite places in all of Vrindavan to, to spend time alone or with a few devotees, you know, reading or chanting or praying or having a soft bhajan. And I originally found out that his samadhi was there, a little courtyard, not a very big area, beautiful samadhi, but uh, there's a little ashram of sadhus that live there as well some beautiful trees. It's only a two-minute walk off the Parikama Mark, actually. And I used to go there, and you know, I remember 1974, 75, 1976. And uh, at that time, not many devotees knew about it, or it wasn't perhaps one of the main places that we'd go on Parikama in those days. But I'd always walk down there. I'd go down the Parikama Mark. And um, I'd sit there, and I'd chant, and I'd pray, and especially pray to him, he's another one of my heroes, actually. And uh, I tried to keep it secret, because <laughs> no one ever went there. Just very few devotees went there. And um, it gets sort of quiet, undisturbed, sanctified. But um, yes, now devotees know about it. More devotees know about it. So please, um, next time you go to Vrindavan um, and you pass by Kaliagad, you can ask the local people, where is the Samadhi Mandir? of Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati. And believe me, you're, you, you'll be so pleased to have got your, it's such a wonderful spiritual atmosphere. And as we know, we can pray to our acharyas at their samadhis, and we can know that they're hearing, and we can know that they reciprocate. So please go. Hearing these f few glories that we know about him, <laughs> but it's enough. And, of course, we have his writings, Vrindavan Mahimamrita. So many devotees love that book. And Navadvipa Sataka describing the holy places in, in Navadvip Mayapur. So you can take the books. That's what I do. I take the books and I, and I go and I read there. And you can sit right next to the samadhi. <laughs> and you can reveal your heart to that good, uh, great devotee and pray for his mercy. So before we conclude, <laughs> 
um, I would like to mention that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur brings up uh, a rather interesting issue that I found in my research. <coughs> he writes, quote, some people attempt to establish that the Mayavadi, resident of Kashi, Varnashi today, Prakashananda Saraswati, is one and the same with the foremost of Vaishnavas, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati. We, however, do not accept this in any way, shape, or form." Unquote. That's the quote of Bhakti Shananta Saraswati, that some people say that the Mayavadi sannyasi of, of uh, Varanasi, Benares, we all know from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prakashananda Saraswati had thousands of Mayavadi followers. Mahaprabhu converted him, of course, but he was a Mayavadi for most of his life, actually. He wasn't actually converted, I read, until he was more or less elderly. So, um, they're not the same person. Prakashananda Saraswati and Prabodhananda Saraswati are two different persons. And actually, I did find a number of scholars and historians, even today, who support this nonsensical theory that the Mayavadi sannyasi Prakashananda Saraswati and R. Pabodhananda Saraswati are the same person. I found many references like that. Their logic is that after Lord Chaitanya converted Prakashananda Saraswati and all his followers in Kashi, uh, Prakashananda changed his name to Prabodhananda Saraswati and then he went to Vrindavan. Well, we know from Chaitanya Charitamrita who he was <laughs> in Sri Rangam, Gopal Guru, associated with Mahaprabhu, came from there to Vrindavan and never left. He didn't go to, didn't go to Kashi and become a Mayavadi, or he wasn't, didn't start off in Kashi and go to Sri Rangam. It's just nonsense. It's simply not historically true, and there's no written record of this, that the Prakashan under the Saraswati you know, became Prabodhananda Saraswati when he was converted and came to Vrindavan. And what's more, from our uh, Gaudiya Vaishnav perspective, why in the world would Tunga Vidya, Tunga Vidya, who we opened this class with, describing her, in, or relating in terms of Shastra, so many of your beautiful qualities, unlimited qualities. She's one of the eight, eight Astasakis. Why would Tunga Vidya descend into this world and become a Mayavari <laughs> and then be converted to a Vaishnava. <laughs> it's offensive. We understand that Srila Prabhupada Saraswati is a Nitya Siddha, an eternally liberated soul. And a Nitya Siddha never uh, is contaminated by coming in contact with the material energy. And when you come in contact with the material energy, how do you become contaminated? Well, there's different degrees of contamination. Prabhupada said there's two types of illusion in this world, or you could say contamination. One is to think, I am the body, and the second is to think, I am God. That's how you get contaminated. Conditioned soul can come under the influence of the material energy, or the spiritual energy. But when one's under the influence of the material energy, he strongly is convinced, I am this body. And another extension of that illusion is that I am God. And the Mayavadis, they preach this illusion, I am God. Therefore, Prabhupada uh, writes in uh, purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhulila 7.143, quote, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that the Mayavadis are the greatest offenders. So again, how could Tunga Vidya, <laughs> one of the eight Astasakis, girlfriends of, of Radharani, appear in the material world as a Mayavadi and become the worst of the offenders? No way. It's not possible. Of course, it is wonderful that Prakashananda Saraswati became converted to Gaudiya Vaishnavism, as did all his followers, by the power and the potency of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Yuga Avatar. But historically, they all stayed in Kashi, and they practiced Krishna consciousness there after Mahaprabhu left. Anyway, there's no need to discuss this matter any further. <laughs> it's not very tasteful. I only brought it up because um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur brought it up. And because one day in, in your preaching you may be called upon to defend 
Srila Prabodhana de Saraswati from this false doctrine. Preaching means also defending, defending Krishna. <laughs> so, <coughs> rather, let us um, close the day with <coughs> several um, very wonderful glorifications of Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati by devotees down through the ages. We can hear from devotees uh, down through the ages. We may not know about them, but if they're um, preaching and their shadanta is identical with ours, then uh, there's no harm. Just like my dear god brother Srila Giriyas Maharaj has just published a book on Srila Prabhupada's pastimes in Juhu Beach, uh, in Juhu, in Mumbai, how Prabhupada established the temple. So we're hearing it from a contemporary of um, Srila Prabhupada. And there will be devotees in the future who are also write wonderful things about um, other devotees, about Sridhar Prabhupada, about the history of Iskand. So we, we, we hear from them. So we can also hear from personalities who appeared in the several hundred years after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If their shadanta is in line with ours, and um, if the philosophy that they're speaking and the pastimes um, are the same as we're hearing from um, our beloved Prabhupada, and from our previous acharyas like Srila Bhakti Shadanta Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Vinodakur, etc. So I found one passage uh, wherein we hear a very beautiful description of um, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati in a book called Vyasa G. Kivani. Vyasa G. Kivani. It was written by one Hariram Vyasa in the 16th century. And here's how he describes our Srila uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati. It's very beautiful. Quote, Poets like Prabodhananda are very rare. He sang about all mellows in the divine pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Having broken the strong bonds of material life, his only hope was to relish those loving pastimes. His natural sweet words stole the minds of other exclusively devoted rasikas. In his heart, he always held the Lord's pure qualities, names, and forms, and thus turned away from all sensual agitation. Like a chakora bird, he kept his eyes on the moonlike reflection of the beautiful nails of the Lord's lotus feet, and in this way gave up all illusory happiness, the bodily concept of life, and the grip of Yamaraj. I love the way he ends it. <laughs> he gave up all illusory happiness, the bodily concept of life and the grip of Yamaraj. So we thank that Prabhu for that beautiful glorification. Also another beautiful uh, tribute is found by, um, uh, uh, is there in the, in, uh, the writings of a, of a highly respected Vaishnav poet. Uh, his name was Priyadas. He wrote in the year 1712, quote, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati was a great Rasik Bhakta and a devoted associate of Lord Chaitanya who was bliss personified. He gave fresh descriptions of the loving pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in the groves of Vrindavan. He relished their forms and rasas and made them dearmost. In his poems he revealed the splendor of residing in Sri Vrindavan Dham and thus merged the devotees into an ocean of unlimited happiness. He came aloof from all materially motivated activities and religiosity. Listening to his poems, millions of people fell in love with Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. While residing himself in the beautiful Vrindavan, he sacrificed his body and mind in the service of the Lord. And finally, we'll hear uh, from the first chapter of uh, Bhakti Ratnakara, where Narhari Chakravarti um, says, quote, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati had many virtues. Even in dreams he did not know anyone else besides Sri Krishna Chaitanya, the Supreme Brahman, who was so dear to him. He was fascinating, supremely detached, affection personified, a great poet, poet and incomparable in dance and music, both vocal and instrumental. He would increase the happiness of all those who heard him speak. And I can add, he also increases the joy and happiness of those who speak about him, as I had that 
golden opportunity today. So wonderful. Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati ki jai, Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Sri Prabhupada ki, Sri Brajubhumi, Sri Vrindavan Dham ki, Sri Rangak Shetra ki, O Premanandi. So thank you, Prabhus. Um, we'll move on uh, again. I'll see if there's any more um, personalities who resided in Vrindavan during their lives to uh, speak about and, and glorify them. And uh, if not, then we'll move on to some more uh, Vrindavan Leela. So I, I really enjoyed the research. Um, I really enjoyed uh, sharing all the research uh, with you uh, today, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Shishi Gorani Thai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radha Shamasundar Ki, Vrindavan Ishwari Shimati Radharani Ki, Shira Babu Bhada Ki, Shira Prabhunda Saraswati Ki, Gopi Mnandi, JJ Sisi Radhe Sham Hare Krishna, Shibra Jabumi Shibra Vrindavan Dhamma Ki.